Okay, in this screencast, we're just going to have a look at um, a few little changes I've, I've made, really. Um, I'm just going through the database, adding some um, data. And it's dawned on me as I'm doing it, I need to make perhaps some, some little changes to what I'd originally planned, which is absolutely fine. I'm just doing it now on the fly. So I'm just uh, going to record it um, as part of this screencast, just to show you where I'm making the changes and why. I started with the stock table. Um, and if we put that one into uh, datasheet view, Okay, I realised really that the word description was a little bit vague, so I thought I'd have different stock categories. Okay, so perhaps as a sports shop, I could have um, football kits, rugby kits, um, track suits, uh, and the like. So really, I ought to create a new stock category table, so I can look up the category from the stock table. So that's what I've done. I've created a new table. I've given it a category ID with the format SCAT and um, for stock category and the actual category itself. So in stock category, I've added um, different categories. So for example, football kit, rugby kit, boots, trainers, uh, merchandise, that could be like hats, scarves, things like that. Uh, and then things like rugby balls and footballs. Obviously that list could go on for quite a while, but just for the, for the purpose of this demonstration and really for the purpose of your, um, your coursework, um, I think that should be sufficient for now. So back over in my stock table, I'm going to delete kit, that was just uh, a word I typed in. So we need to create the lookup. So very, very quickly, um, we'll change the stock table into design view. And under category, we'll go to the lookup wizard. Um, I want to look up the fields, we'll get the values from another table or query, okay. And I'm looking for table stock category, there it is. And next, I just want the category, so I'll nudge that one over to the selected field, click on next. Don't want to sort it in any particular order. A little preview there of um, the data from that table. Click on next category, that's a suitable label, and click on finish. Okay, so yes and yes. So when I go back to data view, okay, I can now choose rugby kit, football kit, etc. Okay, so that's one little change I've made. Um, and as I've been doing that one, it's also dawned on me size. I could manually type in the different sizes, but again, it would make sense um, to create a sizes table and do a lookup. So I shall do that also. So as I've created the product sizes table, it's just dawned on me there's going to be lots and lots of different sizes. So for example, I think if we just take to, to make it easier, something I know about, which is uh, or aware of men's clothes. Um, so obviously we'd have small, uh, medium, uh, large, uh, extra large and extra extra large. Now that would cover um, tops, wouldn't it? Like rugby rugby shirts and things like that. But also, if we were selling shoes, we'd have to go through or football boots or trainers. We'd have to go through the shoe sizes as well. So really, it's just pretty generic sizes list. So we could say we could go an eight, a nine, a ten, an eleven, a twelve, and a thirteen as well. So we can just add all the sizes, and then as we're adding products, we can choose the appropriate size for the appropriate product. So back in the stock table from the size, I've gone ahead, you can see there, and created a lookup. So when I go back to the datasheet view, this time when I click on size, I've got that list there of sizes. So as we start to enter products, it'll make it a lot easier just to pick up the, the information that we need. Now, as I was doing size, it's also just dawned on me a good way to get a calculation into the database. We've got cost price and we've also got selling price and we could work out the difference between these two to give us a profit. Now, an ordinary um, employee from the shop wouldn't need to know that information, but from a, a managerial perspective, it would be uh, quite useful. So we'll do that as well. So we'll change the um, stock table into design view, okay. Um, I'm going to quickly add a new row, uh, insert row there, and we'll call that unit profits. That's the amount of money made per per unit sold. And we'll change that to a calculated row. Okay, so I'm going to take the selling price and I'm going to minus the cost price, okay, which gives me the difference. So if I click on OK, Okay, quickly save that table and go back to uh, design view, the data sheet view. Okay, and I can see now the unit profit is £30. So the cost price or the purchase price is £19.99. The selling price is £49.99 
and it's automatically calculated the difference between the two, the unit profit. So for every England rugby top um, that the shop sells, there's £30 profit. So as I said at the start of this screencast, we're looking at the, the different tables, the different data that's going into those tables, um, making a few changes on the fly, um, and also looking at how we can link the data together. So um, I've put a couple of examples in of the stock. We've got the uh, England rugby top and also the Wales rugby top. Um, we've done the unit profit, that was a new one that we added, but we've also got the supplier ID here as well. So what we're gonna need to do very, very quickly is create a lookup to the list of suppliers. So if I have a look in my suppliers table, okay, I haven't got any data in here. Um, I'm just gonna pause the screencast quickly while I add a supplier just for the purpose of this demo. So I'm just starting to add data to the suppliers table um, and we need to create another lookup. So we'll do that very, very quickly. Um, if we, it's contact title we need to, to work with. So we'll change that one to design view. Okay, contact title, we'll change that to a lookup. Uh, click on next. And we're going back to that titles table, the, uh, the second table that we created. Okay, and this is a table that we can share data with now between the customers, employees and the suppliers. So there's table title click on next, we'll just nudge over title to the selected fields and click on next, preview, all's looking good, next and finish. Okay, so we've got to save that one. Okay, and we can pop back into data sheet view. Okay, so now I can choose a mister, let's open these up just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see what we're doing. So contact first name, uh, Steve Davis, sneaker player I think, address, um, is number 17 cherry tree lane okay uh, the town Worcester in fact the city Worcester is a city so we'll just put Worcester straight into there uh, WR2 <coughs> so making it up 6 AJ telephone number uh, area code for Worcester is 01905 I think it was um, six six, make it up. Okay, and an email address. Hello at shoresports.co.uk. Okay, so now I've got my uh, supplier in. Okay, so I can save that record, and we can go back to the um, stock table. There it is. Okay, and we need now need to link again via a lookup the supplier to. Um, the suppliers table okay so we'll do that now so we'll change to um, design view okay again it's just another lookup um, so we're looking for the supplier ID okay we'll click on next um, we'll do the lookup again we'll choose the want to look up the data from a field or a query and we're looking for table suppliers. There it is, click on next. Okay, and we'll have the, we'll just choose the supplier company name. That's that's all we need. Because again, in the, in the scenario of having different people working for different companies, the contact first name could change. That person could leave, um, get another job, could be replaced by somebody else. That Those details would have to be updated. Um, so we'll just go with the supplier company name. Again, that could change, but it's less likely to happen than somebody leaving and being replaced. Um, we don't need to sort it. Okay, there's just our one example. We're happy with the label, so we finish that one. Okay, should we save it? Yes, we will. So now when we go back to our stock table in datasheet view, okay, we can choose the supplier at Shore Sports. So if I was to add more uh, suppliers to the suppliers table, I'd have a long list there of suppliers I could choose from. Okay, so we've been adding um, a few more lookups. So we're gonna change the, um, or add additional relationships to the database. So let's just have a, a quick look under database tools. And relationships okay show tables and we'll choose all of these tables I'm gonna hold the control button down on my keyboard whilst clicking on each table click on add okay and there they are okay now you can title one is I've, I've added that one twice okay but you can see the relationships which have now been created and if we take the titles table we've got a link to the employees we've got a link to the um, suppliers um, and we'll also have a link to the customers as well. Okay, in fact, I will quickly create that one so we can see it added in there. So if we close that for a second um, and click on yes to save, let's quickly go to our customers table. Uh, we'll change that to design view. We'll create a quick lookup. OK, 
okay and we want the table title click on next we just nudge over title to the selected fields we don't want to sort it preview the data looking good next suitable uh, label name click on finish and we save so now when we go back to database tools and the relationships we can see we've created another relationship there as well so that so far is how the database and the tables and the relationships are looking let's organize it so it's a little bit neater to see there we are okay okay so we'll uh, just close that down saving that layout and back to our tables okay as I'm adding data I just want to quickly show you the mobile number validation that we set up earlier working um, I put in a mobile number here uh, so 07450 now I tend to put spaces in because it's easier to read as I move across the mobile number must contain 11 numbers that's a message that we entered earlier in the table validation so all I've got to do is just backspace um, the space out and then I can move on to the email address but just uh, an example there of the validation working okay again so as I'm going through the database tables I'm adding just one row of data to each table um, just in order to work out which lookups I need um, so job title is another one so what I'm going to do very very quickly is create a new table call it job title enter a couple of job titles and then create the lookup okay so I've created a quick table table job title um, you can see I've got shop assistant um, shift manager and shop manager um, so when I go back to the employees table I can choose one of those three values from the drop down list so we'll put this uh, uh, record in as the shop assistant okay so that's one new record added to my employees we've got the employee ID the title first name surname the date of birth their uh, address um, through to the mobile number email address and we have to create the lookups for the job title I've also added the date employed and a salary a basic salary of twelve thousand pounds so it's a case now of working through each of these tables adding one record of data just to make sure that you've got all your lookups that you need um, and you've created any additional tables that you might need as a result of those lookups um, and then once you've added data uh, one row uh, one record to each table you can then go ahead and add another five or six just so you've got a balance of data across the whole database okay so finally I'm going to go through each table just checking that I've got um, the correct data and the correct lookups in place so we start with the customers um, I've got one row of data it's all working fine and I've got the lookup to the titles uh, table then I've got employees uh, one row of data I've got a lookup for the titles table um, but I've also got a lookup for the job title as well uh, job title that's just a list of the job titles that links into the employees uh, table uh, product sizes that's the table we've produced to list all the products uh, sales the sales table will leave that blank now for now because this data will be populated as we start making sales and using the system uh, security we created that one I'm just going to add my username and a password this is something I won't forget love ICT there we are and you can see we've got the asterisks there because we put it as a password field uh, stock um, we've got a couple of stock um, records in there and we had the lookup for the sizes the uh, there it was okay we created a table there and we also added the unit profit and did a calculation to work out the difference between the selling price and the cost price um, stock category um, that was a, it was a football kit a rugby kit that was in the stock table as well okay that was there um, so that was just a quick table of different categories the suppliers table so again we've got um, their company name uh, the lookup there for the title and then just the basic contact information and we've got the titles table as well so you can go ahead now and make sure that you've got similar uh, tables in your database to mine um, that you've put appropriate validation on those tables and you've added one row of data to test that it's all linked in together then once you've added one row of data go through and add five or six records to each table